friends and attendants welcome back to high point and in this video we will be looking at the key figure related to feminism simon d bivoyer simon d bivoyer she lived from 1908 to 1986 and uh, in the upcoming slide you will see her major concepts okay so if you have not yet subscribed to my youtube channel subscribe to me and press the bell icon while you are subscribing so that you get a notification for the new updates that we are making in our youtube channel and also follow me on instagram if you are interested for variety of materials which are helpful in your net jr of english language and literature preparation uh, the id is right here liji maria 90 and also visit my website www.highpoint.in if you are seriously trying and preparing for nta ugc net jr of english language and literature to, to see whatever you have need to cover for the preparation for the exam after having the free trial you can see the 900 Uh, audio lectures that we are sharing there the uh, 300 downloadable pdf materials if you are interested to have this entire materials uh, with the 15 percentage of off going in the website you can subscribe to the course right now and prepare for the uh, for, for the next schedule of exam if you want to know more about anything related to the website and the nta ugc net jr of english language and literature contact me through this number and also use the instagram id to reach out to me okay about simon d bivoyer this is the person that i am referring this is a an image of her let's have an introduction about her bivoyer was a french feminist social political activist and a philosopher and a writer she was in plenty she her nationality is uh, france okay she is a french feminist do remember that okay questions can be asked about the nationality of various uh, thinkers philosophers and theoreticians okay significantly contributed to feminist theory and feminist existentialism see she was a great writer great politic great thinker of feminist literary theory of feminist theory and also feminist existentialism her most important contribution is the second sex so remember this title you cannot forget that the author of this work the second sex is Simon D Bivoyer that's important that you remember it and it was published in 1949 which is one of the foundational text of the contemporary feminism she wrote cross genres she wrote cross genres means she wrote many works in many other genres and wrote uh, travel diaries essays novels short stories and also some books which are relevant in feminism as well in 1970s on where she became active in france's uh, women's liberation movement so from 1790 sorry from 1970 on where she was so active in uh, french women's liberation movement bivoyer had a lifelong relation with sartre sartre also she he was a uh, post colonial uh, sorry she he was a post uh, uh, post modern thinker french thinker and uh, she had a bivoyer had a very uh, close lifelong relationship with sartre in la ceremonie des adieux she wrote the painful account of his last years another important scholars influenced bivoyer's works were hegel and Leib leibniz leibniz okay so these uh, hegel and leibniz differ these two were important influence of bivoyer other than sartre okay now moving on After her graduation, she worked with Maurice Merleau Ponty and Claude Lévi-Strauss. With Claude Lévi-Strauss, he uh, he was a he was a uh, anthropologist. He was a structural anthropologist. And Maurice Merleau Ponty, he was important in phenomenological criticism. And after her graduation, she was working with these two people. In 1954, she won France's most prestigious literary prize for the Mandarins. So Mandarins. Uh, it was her one of the famous work one of the important works by bivoyer and in which her lover algren appears as a fictional character and this point uh, it was a previous question so in mandarin we can see uh, bivoyer's lover algren appears as a fictional character and it was published in uh, 1954 in that same year itself she got france's most prestigious prestigious literary prize for this particular work the mandarins after her death in 1989 she was buried next to sartre at the mount parnasse cemetery 
in Paris. So she was buried next to Sartre after her death in 1989. Okay, these are her major texts. Read along with me. I'll read the titles and the year of publication. So read along with me or pause the video and read these titles uh, five to six times so that uh, it may uh, have an impression in your mind and you could memorize them uh, while you see them. Uh, first one is She Came to Stay, published in the year 1943. The Blood of Others in 1945. The Second Sex in 1949. The Mandaris in 1954. The Long March in 1957. Memorials of a Dutiful Daughter in 1958. The Prime of Life in 1961. The Woman Destroyed in 1967. All Said and Done in 19, uh, 1972. It's 1972. Sorry, this for sorry for this correction. Adia say farewell to Sartre in 1981. Okay, so I'll read the titles again. Read with me. She came to stay. The blood of others. The second sex. The mandarins. The long march. Memories of a dutiful daughter. The prime of life. The woman destroyed. All said and done. Adia say farewell to Sartre. There are many texts uh, written by her, but I have chosen. Some important ones that I felt uh, of importance for your Netijaya preparation. She also has written many other works. Okay, these are not the only works she has written. That's what that that's what my uh, my point. Okay, now let's see uh, elaborately about her major work, which is relevant in feminism, titled as the Second Sex, and it was published in 1949. It discusses the treatment of women throughout the history. How history throughout history how women are treated and how systematically they were subjugated by men or patriarchal ideologies. And uh, this work, the second sex was, this work was an inspiration for the second wave feminism. So in the introductory video about feminism in which we discussed about the major concepts of feminism, you know, we have discussed the three waves of feminism. If you have not watched that video, you can find that in the i button. There is a playlist in which I have included all the uh, previous videos of literary theory and criticism. You can have all of them. Okay, if you have missed any one of them. And uh, the very previous video also available in the i button. So, this was a uh, this was a this was an inspiration. The second sex was an inspiration for the second wave feminism. And in this work, Bivoyer asks that, what is women? She says, men are considered as default, while women are the other. So, men are considered as perfect beings. Men are considered as strong. Men are considered as everything. The epitome of every beautiful and every other perfect thing is considered as men. While women is considered as other. So, men, is cons men are default default settings but women are something other which lacks something who lack something women lack something because men are perfect beings and we can only refer to women in relation to with man women have only an identity when uh, when uh, men are there and men uh, how what is what are men what are not men that is women okay so what is men that's the question that uh, that's the question that she mainly asks in here. Women are defined in relation to him. In relation to men only, women got an identity, women got a definition. Men occupies the role of the self or subject, women is the object. So, men is the subject, men is the self, men got the uh, everything that is beautiful and everything that is perfect. While well, women is the object that a man should pursue. That's how women usually in every other uh, spaces in every especially in film song you can see how women usually refer to as something that is consumable that's why everything related to women is problematic when women uh, breaks a law that becomes a huge issue because men are subjective they can have everything but women are object which must be pursued by men or consumed by men he is essential, absolute and transcendent while she is inessential, incomplete and mutilated. She lacks something. That's the problem. That's the assumption. Incomplete without him. So, what? how come a woman get a completeness when she becomes a mother? How come a woman can become a mother when she has him? Okay. Uh, mutilated means, uh, you know, uh, just compare the sexual organs of men and women. 
Men has an obvious sexual organ, while women don't. Women uh, do not have a obvious sexual organ which is erected outwardly, which is uh, which stands outwardly uh, from her body. Okay, so it's such a it's a little bit complicated, but these are some um, you know inherent some um, you know unconsciously carrying out notions that we believe so far. Or especially men believe so far or patriarchal institutions and patriarchal notions are created based on this okay it is the duty of men to give life to women and never a woman uh, is assumed to give a life to men after marriage so it's complicated but still you can understand if you're a female listener he creates acts even she waits for him to save her. So, always it's like that. She is waiting for him to rescue. She is under uh, an issue, a problem. Uh, a man should come to uh, rescue her. He cannot, uh, she cannot articulate anything of herself. It's not true actually. Women are also so capable just like gender. Gender is not an issue when it comes to intellectual uh, capabilities and it, when it comes to cerebral equality. But always we refer men are so superior in terms of intellectuality, in terms of capabilities, in terms of every other qualities that uh, men, uh, that human beings have. So he creates, he acts, he invents, he is the one who produces everything. She waits for him to save her. She waits for him to come to her life and save her. Uh, she waits for him to come to her life and give a life of worthy, um, give, give a worthy life to her. So this is how society is acting. If anybody goes against this, if any woman wants to have a life of her own, that's a problem. Nobody will allow her to be like that. This distinction is the basis of all Bivoy's later arguments. So, this concept that she, uh, you know, articulates in this work, that is the this distinction of gender between male and female, that society created, patriarchy created. This is the basis of all her uh, later arguments that he, uh, that she uh, produced in uh, in this work or uh, contributed into feminism. Bivoyer argues that it's natural to understand the meaning in relation to its opposites. But when it comes to the case of gender, it processes flawed. So, he, she says that there is nothing wrong that you understand a concept in relation to its opposite. So, when you understand good, what is goodness, then you have to understand what is bad, what is worse. So, in that way, you will understand meanings of terms, meanings of things and concepts but when it comes to the gender it is different so it's different means when you understand women are not the opposite of opposite of men men are not opposite of women that's a flawed idea that's a fault idea so you have to come out of this kind of uh, understanding of meanings when it comes to gender by considering by understanding the opposite you cannot understand the concept or uh, the meaning of a gender in defining women exclusively as other men is effectively denying her humanity. So when women is considered as an object which must be consumed as consumed by women consumed by men, then effectively by patriarchy it is denying her existence as a human being. She then says how collectively work to bring uh, uh, how collectively we need to work to bring about the essential difference between men and women provide no justice for women's inferiority. So, there is no justice for women's inferiority, women's subjugation throughout these years, throughout these centuries and uh, uh, all this history, history you can find women are inferior, women are treated inferior, women are not inferior but women are treated inferior how women are effectively and collectively uh, how um, you know forcefully concept wise also how women are uh, treated as inferior and that the inferiority led to their subjugation too they all take women's inferior uh, inferiority destiny for granted if you are a woman you are inferior that is taken for granted if you are a woman you need to do the uh, house chores if you are a woman you need to take care of your husband just like a child if you are a woman you need to give priority to your uh, family uh, your uh, children mm? if you are a woman you cannot give priority to your career you need to take care of everything uh, if you take less care of yourself you are not at all giving any importance to you then you are a good woman 
so this inferiority this uh, things related to women they are taken for granted if you are a woman if your gender is woman she is all she also says that there is no persuasive justification for women's subordination throughout the history throughout the history you can see how women were treated as inferior so there is no persuasive justification there is no justification that you provide for women's subordination throughout the history she also discusses the mythical representation of women how mythically also myth wise also how women are represented and how uh, this myth representation is also brought about subjugation and subordination for women how uh, this subordination and just uh, you know subjugation and inferiority of women are represented and justified mythical representation because of some mythical representation she is symbolized as life and in the process is robbed of all individuality from her so in mythical representation you can see women are uh, symbolized and represented as mother life giving nurturing so by you know inculcating by giving this type of uh, symbolized the meaning to women their individuality women's individuality are all robbed out of them are all destroyed and uh, women's individuality is no more considered as valid women's individuality and identities are not serious you know they don't have any separate individuality because of the symbolization of mythical representation of women as life as nurturing nourishing um, characters or as life giving characters okay she says that the eternal feminine fiction is reinforced by biology psychoanalysis history and literature so how women are systematically subordinated or systematically subjugated and made inferior to men throughout these years they you know the it's eternal feminine if you are a woman you are like this is eternal never ending feminine qualities are attributed to women or reinforced to women using biology biological differences how women uh, are muscular in a muscular terms women are their strength is less compared to men you no know, we cannot uh, you know lift certain things that women are doing uh, that that uh, the, the same way how men are doing biological differences physical differences are there and they are for a reason also it's not for the inferiority of women it is not simply because of that women are not inferior and psychologically you know freud's theories and all they also contributed to women's inferiority how so women are you know, systematically subordinated history wise literature also used in order to contribute this uh, idea this fiction of eternal femininity so these things are systematically used concept wise these are used and reinforced the eternal feminine fiction throughout the history throughout these years from the beginning of time itself okay now volume 1 of this work is titled as facts and myths and volume second is titled as women's life today she proves that women are not born feminine but shaped by a thousand external processes by analyzing female development through its formative stages childhood youth and sexual initiation see throughout the stages of female child childhood times there is a process that every other feminine child every other female child undergoes and uh, this external process after giving after having the birth the uh, the female child goes uh, undergoes all this you know uh, all these external processes so that they got this feminine qualities and they also believe that this feminine qualities are given to them and they also believe that because of being a woman they need to be like this systematically it is done throughout these uh, formative stages of a female child in childhood there is a formative stage there is a pro process going on in youthful also uh, in while uh, in adolescent time also there is a uh, process going on in sexual initiation and while you are an adult also there is a formation process going on so that your feminine quality is in reinforced into you and you know you may believe that you have born with this feminine qualities but you are not born with this feminine qualities men and women they are they 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 came to this world equally the you know through the same process but after having the life they are going through the thousands of external processes that will formulate uh, the feminine 
the masculine quality in you and instill these qualities in you so that you may believe that uh, you have this illusion that you born with these qualities. Every force in society conspire to deprive her of subjectivity and flatten her into an object. So every other institution, every other forces, take the example of cinema, literature, uh, family system, education system, every other force in society, it will flatten women. It will, you know, deprive or deny women of their subjectivity or individuality, their power and also flatten her into an object. Never allow uh, females or never allow a female child to uh, develop their own subjectivity, their own identity, independent of uh, men. Bivoy discusses about in various stages of women and the trauma involved in them. She also goes in detail about various ways how women reinforce their subordination it's not that initially in the process as the process begins we need you know, the external factors will uh, affect the child to involve and develop these feminine qualities uh, cultural things will involve in order to bring about this uh, femininity in, in them uh, you know bring about the consciousness of femininity in them but before discusses that, he also, she also says that various, after that stage, it's like women will reinforce themselves of their subordination. We, you know, when a woman act differently, it's women, they will react like she is wrong. She cannot do that because she is a woman. She, and she cannot go out. Your mother will say to you, she is a woman and you are also a woman. And she will tell, tell you, you cannot go out night because you are a woman. You should care, take care of your sexuality. If you if someone rapes you, uh, someone uses you sexually, you are polluted. You are of no use. As an object, you are useless now. Since you don't have an object, uh, subjectivity, you are an object. And, you know, it goes like that. See, various other ways, women also believe themselves as this, as themselves as subordinate and subjugated. And they also internally believe that being a woman, it's like that. It, it is quite normal. Okay. So, women reinforces their subordination in that way. In the concluding chapter, we were discusses that logical hurdles women faces in pursuing goals of liberty. So, some women... And many other, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, the coming generation, they are well conscious about their position. They are, uh, they also very consciously think about, thinking about their identity, their liberty, their freedom. Uh, women and men, they, both of them. So, the logical hurdles women faces when they pursue their liberty also discussed in the concluding chapters in this work, uh, The Second Sex. We will have an individual video later, uh, some other time about second sex. And in this video, I am not uh, going in detail about this work. Uh, when we discuss individually about the second sex, we will have a more detailed analysis about this text. Now, that's all about it. Meet you in the next video session. Follow me on Instagram as well as, uh, as, well as subscribe to my channel and visit my website www.highpoint.in. Have a free trial and see. And if you are interested, let me know and subscribe to the post from the website as well. Okay. Meet you in the next video session. Until then, stay tuned to High Point and be happy and strive for the best whatever your endeavors are. Okay. Thank you. Ta-ta.